All right. Well, hey, everyone. It is Monday. It's May 9th already. And my name is Dee Corchin. I'm glad you're with us. This is our Monday night Coaches Out for Change team time, uh, really for every coach in the organization, whether you're brand new or experienced. Um, we welcome you here. And I know very often we have individuals that are considering coaching. So if you are one of those that are taking a peek at the family, um, we're glad that you are here. So first, just want to congratulate you guys. I hope you are still going strong with this essential start savings. We've got until 11.59 tonight with that. So um, you can wrap up anything last minute. We're going to come back and talk about that because this has been an incredible and created an incredible opportunity for our team. So uh, much of our discussion tonight is going to be about kind of really what's next. What do we do next? It can seem like, especially if you took out a bunch of new clients, like we have a bunch of balls in the air. So we're going to give you some structure around that, how to really start to be the CEO of your company and have or your, your uh, coaching business and, and really know and follow the simple processes, just keeping it simple. Um, but before we do that, our inspiration tonight, I'm so excited to share with you that um, global uh, Jordan Rosa reached global director. I know that you guys know that in the, the month of April, and she has just done a phenomenal job um, really loving on other people, growing as an individual herself. And I'm just going to turn it right over to you, Jordan, to share with us about this journey, um, kind of what maybe what brought you to Optivia, your background, and then what this is doing for your family. Awesome. Before I do that, um, a little bird told me that it's your birthday tomorrow, D. So I would love if y'all can pop in the chat really quick what you love about D. And if you will unmute, we're going to quickly sing happy birthday because we just love you so much. Please don't make me be the only one singing. You do not want to hear that. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> All right, here we go. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Oh my goodness. Cha cha. <laughs> well, y'all better keep your day jobs. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You guys are so sweet. It's my honor to, to be. Um, able to partner with you. And if anything, that gives you a great example of, of Jordan's heart, right? To, to share her time. So thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely keeping my day job. Actually, that's on my dream list to get voice lessons. <laughs> so um, I came to Optivia about three years ago. It'll be three years this summer. Initially lost um, 55 pounds after the birth of my third child maintained that for about a year, um, had just had my fourth baby and I'm on my way back down postpartum, um, after having him. And I stepped into coaching about 10 days into my program, um, back in 2019. And, um, it's been a journey for sure. Um, learning how to love people, learning how to really see people. And I would say probably that's the biggest thing right now, um, that I'm learning is, <clears throat> learning how to really see people and be more interested in them than being interesting myself. And if you're like me, you love to talk about yourself. Everybody does. Um, and so I really have taken some time to learn how to be a student of people. And one of my favorite things that I've learned recently um, is how to kind of work eye contact to your advantage. And I know we're starting to see people um, more regularly, you know, with, you know, being post COVID and stuff. And so um, I learned recently that when you're speaking to someone, if you want to build rapport, you look into their left eye and focus on that while you're talking. Um, if you want to be serious and get like right to business, then you look at their right eye. I am telling you, this is a game changer. I am a right eye girl and we get right to business. And it's really cool just how in tune you become when you can focus on that one thing. And what I have found is that it's really enabled me to listen to what they're saying um, and pick up on clues of what's really important to this person. Because when you figure out what is so important to someone, then you kind of 
unlock the key right to their why and to what they really want out of life and um what's been happening as a result of that is um, more people are stepping more fully into coaching um, more people are reactivating even people that you know i thought would never come back as clients are coming back um and really like it's just enabling me to ask good questions because I'm paying attention to them. Um, and so I wish that it was like something deeper and more <laughs> wonderful than that, but really it's just that I've put myself aside and made them the most important person in, in the room um, when I'm with them. And it's just making it more fun for me too, honestly, um, because it's driving my confidence up. It's making me feel like I am more connected with people. And I think as a result, we are more connected. Um, and the last thing that I will say is I finally had to learn that I don't know everything. <laughs> and, you know, I, I have been willing to be teachable and coachable. Um, and I never want to stop learning and growing and this is just the most fun that you can have. So if I can do this, anybody can. And that's what I got. Anything else, Steve? No, oh, that's fabulous. Um, and um, you were a nurse before, right? Yes. So yes. it is a difference, right? Going from kind of telling people what to do to coming alongside them. And I think that really is the key, you guys. Um, if you watch the sponsoring workshop from this weekend, Dr. A, I mean, basically copied Jordan <laughs> with what she said. I mean, he said when he has a conversation with somebody, he never knows where it's going to go because he gets just totally poured into what they're saying. And that really is, you know, when you turn off that chatter about what we want. So it's been so fun to see this shift in you, Jordan, because it really was is growth from when you started and kind of your expectations of people to where you are now. So um, congratulations. I know you're just just getting rolling. All right, so we are going to um, keep this going tonight. I'm going to be sharing the call with Lori Cole, and um, we have quite a few people who are going to be speaking. And one, just want to compliment you guys because the Optavia gave us an incredible gift. Would you not agree with Essential Start? Optavia gave us an incredible gift, not only for that one window of time, but yet a second window. And y'all knocked it out of the park. And between last month and what we've brought on so far this month, we have almost a thousand new clients as a team, a oh. thousand new clients. Now, whether you brought on one, none, whatever, I know you're here because you want to be a best service to other people. And when we were on our leadership call last week, they said, you know, now, you know, we have a great calling, right? With this comes great responsibility. And so we really wanted to provide just some clear kind of direction of what do we do next? Because a lot of times it can be seem like we're pulled in different directions. So I really have like five things I want you to pay attention to um, over the next, um, you know, as you're, as you're, prioritizing yourself over the next couple of weeks and really in general, but, and then Lori Cole is going to step in with really, how do you step up with your, with your CEO glasses on with your business? Um, but the number one thing, I mean, we had um, 400, how many people are in our challenge? Over 400 people are in our challenge. Um, so the number one thing we want to do is we want to coach these clients well, and really all of your clients, right? Rather than they came in or not. And by coaching them well, what we're doing is we are integrating them into the four components of the program. So it's so important that we just don't bring them on and be like, oh, good, got one, you know, right? We're in the transformation business. So it really is following that process. And the, I love the summer, the slim, the challenges, because we give them a reading guide, which they like, right? We give them the structure. We force them to interact in the community, but we want you coming behind them and edifying all that. And if they've chosen not to become a part of the challenge, that's okay. Um, maybe that was a little too overwhelming for them to do at the beginning, but do your best to integrate because we know it's in the integration of these four components that that is where success comes. And we want these clients to start experiencing wins and experience wins fast, right? Because you know how it is. It's scary when you start a new journey. Um, and then the other thing is, is that just continue. I I'm hoping you're involved in the challenge, okay, yourself, and just continue to lead with your health and share your journey. Because even though the essential savings is over, um, you know, Dan Valentine, other leaders have made it clear, it wasn't the savings that brought the clients in, you guys. It was us. 
because we were out there and we were visible and we followed up with people and we didn't let things fall through the cracks and we followed the system, right? Because when a person's ready, a person's ready. So tomorrow, if you continue the same actions, you will continue to acquire clients, even though the price is back up at $90. $90. We all know it's worth it. We all know it's worth it. Um, the second thing is, is that I really want to encourage you. So the first thing was, is to, you know, um, coach them well, share your own journey and coach them well. Um, and then we want to prepare them for their second orders. Okay. We know that it's going to be a higher cost, right? So we want to prepare them, let them know, remind them, work with them around that. But it's also a huge opportunity to be talking about sponsoring. I mean, um, referrals right? Because most of us give referral credits. That's a way that, that our clients can share. But more importantly, it's really important that we share and help them share their journey publicly, know how to talk about it. Um, because offering the coaching opportunity is really, really important. And they let us know on the leadership call last week that most coaches are coming in within the first 60 days of their journey the first 60 days. So we really want to be taking advantage of that and having these conversations early, finding out how coaching is going to fill, you know, whatever need they have. Jordan, what'd you say it was 11 days that you, or 10 or 11 days when you stepped into coaching. So kudos to her coach who was talking to her about it right away. Cause your Jordan Rosa is probably out there right? You're, who's, who's in your client base. Um, and so we want to be doing that. And then we want to be the, the last tip I have is really following the process of the tips um, and celebration calls and also coach explorers. And this can be the absolute game changer of your business. We know out being out talking to people, being on social media, that's how we acquire clients. And it's so important so acquiring clients and supporting clients is half of what we do as coaches, but the other is acquiring and, and sponsor and supporting coaches. And it's through these tips and explore calls that we can grow our business exponentially um, by having converse, more conversations around coaching. And what it does is it multiplies because it fills a bigger need in somebody else's life and it's multiplied out bigger. So I want Sarah Bond. Um, she has agreed to come in and talk because this was a game changer, I think, for you from shifting from not thinking you had time for this process to what's happening now. So go ahead, Sarah. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, guys. Um, so yes, when I first started coaching, I was working full time at the DMV. <laughs> I think we all heard that story by now. Um, and, you know, I didn't think I had time for, you know, Jordan's my coach and she would say, let's do our celebration calls. And I'd be like, sure, I'll get on that, you know, but I, you know, I just wasn't doing it. Um, I felt like I was too busy. I was also intimidated by the thought of celebration calls just because I didn't want my clients to think that I had an agenda. Um, I, I was worried about what they might think of me, that I didn't really want to help them, that I really just wanted to grow a business. Um, and so had to come to a realization. I think that it was hard for me at first to see the vision. So like at first I was, I just wanted to help clients, people get what I was getting. I just wanted to help people, you know, lose the weight. But then once I saw that it was possible for me to not only replace my income, but, and then some, and be able to do what I love from home. It was like, oh, okay, <laughs> now I get it. And it was like after convention that that happened. And I knew I wanted to grow deep and wide. Um, and it was, it's just a shift in the thinking and in the mindset to, seeing it more as a gift for people and to realize that what we have, like I had to stop making the decision for other people, whether coaching was good for them or not, that had to stop. Um, it's not up to me whether they coach or not. It's up to them. And everybody deserves that choice just as much as I was given that choice, because my gosh, look at what that has done, what this has done for my life. If Jordan hadn't told me about coaching I'd still be titling cars more than likely and I mean I can't imagine that it makes me want to be sick <laughs> so it's it's just not up to us um 
So it's definitely um, going from that thinking of just having a high frontline qualifying volume and helping out, you know, all the people in that way to growing a deep and wide business and being able to help people, other people realize the dream and see the vision of what coaching can do for them in their life. Is that helpful? Oh yeah. <laughs> Look at the comments there. And did you guys see the theme? So Jordan shared the big fundamental shift for her was when she started making it about other people, right? Really focusing on them. What do they need, et cetera. And then Sarah, I wrote it down. I mean, now you see it as a gift, right? And it's not up to us. It's up to them. So what's happened in your business since then? So you had clients and you kind of thought you were too busy. Didn't want them to think it was weird. Very, very common. Right. I know, like put a one in the chat if you've ever had any of the feelings that Sarah thought. But what does your business look like now? I mean, it's it's grown exponentially. So I went from, you know, well, I'm regional director now. I went from ED to regional director. And we know, and that's another thing. I had to I had to get it in my head that you aren't going to grow too much past ED if you're not willing to talk about coaching with people. And I didn't want to walk away from my full-time job for another, you know, 40 hour job right away. I wanted time freedom. And so in order to get that time freedom, you can't take on all of the clients and be, you know, superwoman all by yourself. You know, it, it's a matter of getting really comfortable and talking to people about uh, coaching. And that starts with celebration calls. If you are the least bit uncomfortable about talking about coaching at all, then just bring your clients to celebration calls because that's the game changer. Your coach is going to talk to them about coaching and you can listen and learn and take it all in. Um, and then you bring them back. If you don't stop there after that celebration call, then you bring them back to a coach explorer. You send them that little video and you say, you know, I'm going to follow up with you. What did you think about that? And then you, you schedule for that, for that coach explore. And it just goes from there. And it just becomes so common and so natural that this is what we do because this is the dream and this is the vision that we can all have. Um, you know, we don't all have to have that eight to five job if we maybe we want it, but maybe you don't. And maybe that person needs what coaching can offer in their life. So. Perfect. It's just grown my, grown my business, you know, in big ways. And yeah, I, I love, I love seeing the, you know, just the blessings that my coaches now are having in their life because of coaching as well. Sorry, mm -hmm. Dee, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. No, no, it's perfect. Yeah. You've got lots of senior coaches. I know you've got a one, at least one executive director on your team. So um, I have two or last month I two. had two. So yeah. See, look at that. Also almost national director. So how cool is that? Um, so that is that is the ripple effect. And you're, thank you for saying that. I got a question. Does everybody say yes to coaching? No. Right. Everybody Do you stop doesn't say it? No, but I'll tell you what, like you just, you don't want to give up on people because sometimes it just takes time for them to see like we can see what's possible and sometimes they just need some time. And so I have learned to not just ask once, you know, you don't give up. It's usually, I feel like a lot of times it's a not yet. So, you know, and not everybody is going to say yes, but it's such a blessing. It's, I don't, I, I don't easily give up anymore. Yeah. Yeah. A lot more do say yes, right? When we stay with it. And there's many people I'm looking yes. at at the screen that didn't say yes the first time. And I did the tips call with them, right? They didn't right, say yes right. the first time. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, Lori Cole, I'm going to let you hop in here now and talk about the next steps. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I don't know if you noticed or not, but we have a new map, a monthly action plan. And one of the things Dee and I were talking about is the shift in my business from, I, I, I equate it to like throwing spaghetti on the wall and see what, see what sticks at the end of the month to really having a working knowledge of what's going on in your business. So the simplified map is something that we're going to show you. But first of all, I want, I'm a teacher, so I can get into some assignments here. But, but what I'm going to tell you is there's a really great reason for why you do a monthly action plan. And that is to give you direction and vision about where your business is going. 
there's value. So a working map mine is here and like it's got highlights and, uh, you know, stuff is written on it. And that's the vision that your monthly action plan can give you. So as you're doing these, this is not just some assignment that no one's ever going to look at, but I encourage you to, to lean into it. So D, if you'll um, pull up the, um, the map for us. So let me tell you where to find it. You're going to go, um, the place that I find is the Coaches Opt for Change um, page. And if you go under files, you're going to see the new, it's called Simplified Map. You can also find it in the coach, uh, the, um, the link tree link under Simplified Map. So it looks a little different than the old one. And I'm going to hit some highlights and I'm going to let a couple of coaches talk to you about what they're learning from this map. So when you look at this, the first thing that we want to know is where do we end up last month? So you're going to find that at the very, very bottom there where you finished last month. And you know, like when your clients say, oh, I don't want to weigh in because I don't want to know that. But, but it, and I always say it's a data point. And that's what this is. It's a data point. What can you create now that you have this information? So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to fill in where you finished last month. And then you're going to go and you're going to run your, and all these steps are on the bottom here where D is scrolling. Every bit of this is right here. So it takes you step by step through what you need to do and how you do it. But you're going to run your projected premier report and you're going to fill it in with your orders and you're not sure orders. One of the things that I love about this monthly action plan is, do you see that middle column that kind of looks like a baseball bracket? This is where you're going to kind of push over the clients that are potential coaches. You're going to push over your not sure order. So you get a clear vision about what your business is really doing. Um, the next step, D, if you'll scroll up just a little bit for me, um, do you see where it says building senior coach teams at the top there? One of the things I did every month, I have a lot of coaches. So I just fill in names. I'd be like, oh, that, that coach has one client and I am just sure that they're going to come right along and they would never post and they would never contact me. And I just wanted to fill in blanks. But what this says specifically is like any coach within 90 days that has signed up or coach that's growing into senior coach. So again, it's a data point. It's a reality check for where we truly are and what that what our business looks like. And I think that's what is going to start speaking to us. Um, I also love by the client name, you see CCC, and that stands for your client celebration call. Have you done that with them? And it's a good way just to keep track of that. Um, and then you list out the clients who are potential coaches. So, you know, we do four things. We do um, client acquisition, client support, coach acquisition, and coach support. So when you don't have a lot of potential coaches, you're going to go back to, do I need more clients? Well, how many clients do I have? Am I missing anything? Have I done my client celebration calls? Um, is there something that my mentor coach can turn over that maybe I, I missed? And that's going to be really important. So when you think about the four quadrants of what you're doing, the map is going to hold up that mirror for you. And it's going to show you. It's not really, I mean, it is about numbers, but it's more about what your business is speaking to you. Um, it's recommended that you highlight your orders in yellow that have processed. And again, this is on your direction sheet and orange with new clients. And I love that. Um, also notice your the top part of this map, my intention for the month. So if you need coach potentials, let's go get some more clients. And you fill in the blank with what your intention is. And then I encourage you to set aside some time like, for one hour a day, I'm going to focus on nothing but this and um, make some goals with your mentor coach. The other thing here is really important is how many Facebook friends you have um, or you're adding, how, where you are in your habits of health, like what element are you on? Because we know that, you know, what we see in our business reflects how we personally are growing too. So the state of your own personal health. So there's a lot more uh, just little checkpoints so that we're not just guessing at what we need. 
Uh, I just had a great mentor call this week with one, a coach that um, I love and support. Um, Whitney is going to come off me and she's going to tell you like she jumped all in with this map and she's going to give you some reflections on that. So um, I kind of sort of jumped all in with this map. What Lori doesn't know is that when I looked at it and I started reading, I was like, what? I don't understand this. But um took me a minute because it was a little bit different, right? Um, but what I realized, I've been doing a map since November of 2019. And every month, or, and she's she's right, she's the teacher. And I'm using a note color map device under my map. This is Mount Anita. Um, but ever since I started a map, she's been telling me, you know, it's a, it's a living document, it's a working document. And I have for three years felt like I've been banging my head against a wall on that because of you know the the workability and I'm like well where do I put this where do I put that and the big thing that I've always struggled with is that we're going down my list I'm like yeah but Lori I know that this one's probably not going to order I don't this one's going to push back so that optimizing and not sure orders thing that they added on the bottom right for me was massive I can put them there she told me to expect about 20 percent of those to fall off and that was just huge eye opener for me. I was like, oh, well, I've got all this and it's going to probably happen here. So we need to go out and get this new clients. We need to go out and do this. The other thing that I really love is that they added that final amount column in the middle where you got your client name, the premier date, the projected amount, and the final amount, because you're not guessing at the end of the month watching, okay, well, here's my current, where's my projected premiere? Where's that going to go? You see it as you go. Um, and that uh, I'm a big, give me step-by-step -step direction kind of person. And I feel like adding those steps has been really helpful for me. The other thing that happened, like Lori mentioned in the, the senior coach teams, the building senior coach teams, I'm writing names down. And, you know, one of my coaches I wrote down and I'm looking, I was like, holy, holy moly, she's got nine orders that are scheduled to go this month. Of course, she's going to hit senior. I need to support her more. I need to give her that attention to help support her how I can to hit her goals. And I, I don't know why, um, I think it has to do with the direction on uh, step four, where it's specifying in their first 90 days, or maybe they've hit senior coach, but they've not been consistent. Something about that direction really resonated with me. And it's given me a clearer vision for coaching coaches. Um, so I took me about five minutes to get comfortable with it, but I adore this new map. I have never been consistent on making it a working document throughout the month. And this one, I really think has that. So I'm very excited about it. Thank you, Whitney. So good. I love that. All right, y'all, we are going to get super excited here. I have asked Frank to join me in the conversation. Frank, if you'll come off mute with me for a second. Um, so here's what I want to tell you about Frank and Shauna. They always turn in their map. They're our globals and they, um, we do mentor calls with them twice a month and I kind of focus on their business. So Frank, I want you to tell us, why do you do your map? What do you see from it? Uh, well, it's, you can have a simple map. You can have a complicated map. You can not have a map. Map is all about mindset. And so before you even do your map, I would ask you, what kind of business do you want? If you want a hobby, you just want a thing, you're just playing with it, you're just sticking your toe in the water, flush the map. You don't need a map. If you want a business, fill out the map. And then as you fill out the map, ask yourself, what kind of business do I want? And then ask yourself while you're filling out the map, what's holding me back? That's so good. What's holding you back? Um, and you guys, one of the things I think holds me back is my thoughts my unhealthy thoughts, you know? So this shows me, Dee and I go over it. We see what we need, what we want, what we lean into, what we start what we start leaning into to focus on uh, for the rest of the month. Hey, um, Frank, I've got another question for you. What advice do you have for a brand new senior coach who's about to jump into this map situation? What would you tell them? Uh, the biggest advice I would have is do two things. Get on your mentor's calendar as quick as possible. The day you go see your coach, you need to be in a Zoom with your mentorship the next day or that day or that hour. You need to be in with your mentorship and you need to ask your mentorship one question. What's next? What's next? And then shut up 
and listen to the advice. And then don't go back to your mentorship until you do that. And now if you do it, go back the next day and then ask the same question. What's next? And repeat that process over and over and over. If you do it, go back, just say, what's next? Go and do it. And then come back and say, what's next? And just shut up and take notes. Oh my goodness, how funny. Um, I listened to D, you guys, when I started doing celebration calls, I was so nervous to Sarah's point. I was so nervous about that. And I would write down verbatim what she said. So Frank has got such a great point there. When you are in with your mentor and you know that because you're here, you're growing. And what you're going to do is you're going to lean into what your mentor says. And I encourage you to write it all down and say, that's a great question. So that when you're coaching coaches, you'll have some of those important questions. The other thing we do is we group mentor. You know, we all get together. If you want to learn more about how to do your map, just get with some, get with your mentor line and um, start filling that in because it's going to take a minute. You're going to see the patterns of your business and then you'll be able to trade trace them through time. And I think you'll be really excited. Sometimes Dee will say, I want you to pull your business up from a year ago and let's look at where you are compared to a year ago. So there's great data points in all of this. So I just encourage you to jump in. You're here because you want to grow and this is an awesome tool. So, um, so we're super excited about it, but press into your mentor and, um, and let's do it. All right. Thank you, Lori. So, um, I hope that's helpful for you. And if you haven't, we put in the in the chat where you can find the, the updated map. We're trying to make these tools simple. I love that these tools are provided for us and they make it um, simple. But this one, I love the directions that come with it and the kind of coding that we can use to, to really help us see that if we're following the process or not. Um, if you're not sure, I saw somebody say the map kind of freaks them out in the comments. That's okay get with your mentor, right? And it comes with practice. Like as with anything, let yourself be a beginner with the map. Even if you do it the first time and you're like, oh no, this is right. Just do it, right? And then you can work with your mentor and really respect your business and respect your business, your, your mentor enough to go through that step before you're meeting with them, right? Because that's how they can best help get their eyes on your business to really see, okay, what do we need here? What do we need to be tweaking? So um, I'm hopeful that's helpful to you. And I, do you guys like the different voices? I think we had like five different people speak tonight because, you know, we're all different, but yet we're doing the same thing. So that was real important to us to be able to provide that for you. Um, just a couple of things as we're wrapping up, I wanted to go back to for just a second regarding the um, Summer Slum Down Challenge. Tomorrow night's Tuesday community call is going to be all about how to optimize that challenge. So really encourage you to be working with your clients to get on that call, you know, texting them beforehand, send them the link until they get into that routine themselves. This is new, but getting them on that call, especially this one will be great. And then we started something new with this challenge. And I want to thank Meg Johnson for doing it, but she sent an email to everybody who had registered all 400 people. Um, we sent an email to them kind of what's next and gave them the reading log, to, reminded them to check the daily page and then let them know every Monday that there would be um, a new link for them to go in and update their results. So we think, you know, um, Brene Brown always says clarity is kind. So we're trying to be as clear as possible as we can with you and with them. So just wanted you to know that that was there. Um, and then I just encourage you guys to jump in. I went today and there were so many, like 50, 60 comments from clients, but nobody had commented on their comments. Right. So I want you to go back to where you were as a client and what it felt like when you put a post and then somebody commented on it. So we're asking our clients to be vulnerable, to share their why. So if every day, like even I challenge you after this call, just go yourself and comment on one post. If we all did that, that would be 56 comments <laughs> that we acknowledged and, and posted. And if you could do that one time per day, um, that would make such a huge difference in the interaction. And you get to see what your clients are doing in there. And that's where it you know, can be a game changer in terms of seeing who's really being supportive and who, you know, who really might have that, what, um, what it takes to possibly become a coach. So um, appreciate everyone, you guys. Um, um, finish up this essential savings strong, continue to do what you're doing so well. And thank you to everyone who shared tonight. And thank you for all your kind uh, words and the happy birthday at the beginning. I love each and every one of you. So we'll see you next time. Thank you.